Have you ever had that weird, quiet moment looking up at the stars where you suddenly realise we might not be alone? and your brain kind of short circuits trying to figure out what that even means? Like, are we talking microbes on Mars, or is there some alien civilization out there debating whether we exist? Well, there's actually a group of people, real scientists, who have made that question their life's work. I'm talking real astronomers, engineers, biologists, people with PhDs, working at one of the most fascinating and quietly revolutionary scientific organizations in the world the SETI Institute. My name's Brad, you're watching Hello From Space, and today I'm gonna to tell you the full story, how SETI began, the people who built it from a crazy idea to a real institution, the close calls, the controversies, and where SETI stands now in the era of AI, endless exoplanets, and private spaceflight. And don't worry, I promise this isn't gonna be one of those clickbaity, aliens confirmed videos. It's better than that. This is real science. This is the long game. And I think by the end, you'll see that the search might be one of the most human things we've ever done. So let's rewind to the late 50s. This is the era of Sputnik, the very beginning of the space race. Back then, space was mostly the domain of rocket engineers and military strategists. But there were a few weirdos in the back corner of a lab, radio astronomers, who were asking a totally different question. What if someone out there is broadcasting? And what if we could hear them? One of these people was Frank Drake. Now, Frank wasn't your average lab coat scientist. He was a bit of a dreamer, but a disciplined one. Now, in 1960, he launched Project Ozma, the first real attempt to detect radio signals from intelligent extraterrestrials. He aimed a radio telescope at two nearby sun-like stars, Tau Ceti and Epsilon Eridani. For weeks, he listened. No luck, but Osma was important for one reason. It proved the concept. This wasn't mythology, this was physics. You could, in theory, detect alien radio transmissions using Earth-based equipment. Now, a year later, Frank created what would become one of the most iconic formulas in all of science, the Drake Equation. Now don't worry, there's not gonna be a quiz at the end. The short version is, it's basically a way to estimate the number of intelligent civilizations in our galaxy that we might be able to detect. Now each variable stands for something. The rate of star formation, the fraction of those stars with planets, the number of Earth-like planets per system, and so on, all the way to L, which is how long a civilization sends out detectable signals before it either goes quiet or goes extinct. It's not a calculator, it's essentially a thought framework, but it gave scientists a common language to discuss the probabilities, and more importantly, a reason to search. Now fast forward to the 70s and 80s, by now SETI's starting to grow legs. Now NASA actually steps in and begins to support some early initiatives. The big one, really the jewel in the crown, is the High Resolution Microwave Survey, or HRMS. Now, it was gonna scan the entire sky using NASA's Deep Space Network, looking for narrow band radio signals, because narrow band, or ultra-specific frequencies, are incredibly rare in nature, but super common in technology. And then, just as it was getting off the ground, Congress killed it. Literally one year after it began, in 1993, a senator named Richard Bryan stood up and called it the Great Martian Chase. Funding was slashed, SETI was done, at least as far as the US government was concerned. And here's where the story should have ended. Like most programs, they just die. But SETI didn't. Instead, a group of scientists led by people like Jill Tarter and Tom Pearson and others said, all right, well, if we can't get public funding, we'll just go private. So in 1984, even before the NASA axe fell, they'd already founded the SETI Institute, based in Mountain View, California. Now, Jill Tata, by the way, deserves a quick spotlight. Not only did she lead major SETI projects for decades, but she also helped SETI gain legitimacy in the wider scientific community. Now, she pushed for more rigorous methods, more transparency, and more public outreach. Now, she's also the inspiration for Jodie Foster's character in the movie Contact, which, by the way, is one of the most scientifically accurate space films ever made. Even if the ending is a little weird and abstract, great movie, just a little weird at the end. Now, 
Okay, so what does SETI actually do all day? Well, the core idea, if aliens are transmitting something, whether on purpose or by accident, we should be able to detect it. Now, SETI mostly uses radio telescopes to scan the sky. They're looking for narrow band radio signals. Again, super precise signals that nature almost never produces, but technology does all the time. Think of it this way. The universe is a noisy room full of random sounds, and gravitational waves, X-rays from black holes, microwave background radiation. SETI is trying to find a single deliberate beep in all that chaos. But it's not just one telescope. SETI has an entire facility, the Allen Telescope Array in Northern California. It's a bunch of small dishes, 42 of them, currently that work together to scan wide swaths of the sky all at once. Now, this array is custom built for SETI. Most telescopes are multi-purpose. They look at galaxies, quasars, basically whatever is on the night's research agenda. But the ATA, the Allen Telescope Array, is a dedicated listener. And listening isn't the only thing they do. There's also optical SETI, searching for intense brief flashes of laser light that could be used for interstellar communication. A SETI also analyzes data from other observatories around the world and even invites citizen scientists to help process it through platforms like SETI at Home, which for years let you use your idle computer power to scan for data signals, sort of like lending your PC to science while you sleep. Now, more recently, they've started using machine learning, AI, to filter out false positives, clean up noisy data, even recognize patterns that humans might miss. Sort of part astronomy, part data science, part detective work. So, has SETI found anything? Sort of, maybe. Or in my native Australian vernacular, yeah, nah, yeah. How bloody are ya? Does anyone else speak Australian? Let's talk about the most famous case, the famous wow signal. Now, in 1977, a volunteer at Ohio State's Big Ear Radio Telescope was scanning printouts. 1977, they had actual paper printouts and saw something weird. For 72 seconds, the telescope had detected a strong narrowband signal. It looked artificial, it came from deep space, and it never repeated. Now, the astronomer circled it in red pen and wrote wow in the margin. And to this day, that's what we call it. Now, was it aliens? Probably not. But it wasn't a known satellite, aircraft, or natural source either. It was a true anomaly. And it's still a mystery, by the way. There are many theories, but we still don't have a definitive answer as to what or who produced the signal. Then there was HD 164595 in 2015, a strange radio burst from a star system 94 light years away. It made headlines, but once again, it turned out to be human-made interference, probably a military satellite. That's the curse and the blessing of SETI. Earth is loud. Radio, cell towers, radar, satellites, even microwaves have triggered false alarms. The hardest part isn't hearing a signal, it's proving it didn't come from us. Now in the modern age, SETI isn't just a scrappy non-profit anymore. It's part of a larger network of scientific efforts all orbiting the same question. Where is everyone? Thanks to space telescopes like Kepler, TESS, and now the JWST, we now know there are billions of Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. The odds have never looked better. SETI has expanded too. They're now involved in exoplanet research, atmospheric chemistry, and technosignatures, which are indirect signs of alien technology, like industrial pollutants in alien atmospheres or unnatural heat emissions that might suggest something as wild as a Dyson sphere. They're also working with Breakthrough Listen, a massive privately funded project backed by Russian billionaire Yuri Milner, which has invested over $100 million into expanding the search for intelligent life. SETI also now includes philosophers, sociologists, linguists, people trying to figure out what we do if a signal actually arrived. And here's something wild as well. Some researchers are advocating active SETI, transmitting messages out to the cosmos on purpose. Now, this idea is controversial. What if we attract the wrong kind of attention? Stephen Hawking wasn't a fan, neither is Elon Musk. Now, others say it's moot, we've already been leaking signals for hundreds of years. Now, even my personal opinion changes based on what alien movies slash shows I've watched recently. If it's Independence Day or Alien, oh, we should probably stay in our own sandbox. 
If it's Doctor Who or my favourite original series, Star Trek, I'm feeling a lot more positive. Captain. The intruder has been attempting to communicate. Has SETI found aliens? No. But what it has found is a kind of clarity. Because the search itself forces us to ask better questions about ourselves, about the nature of intelligence, about what it even means to be a civilization. It's one of the most probably poetic projects in science. It's humanity in all its flaws and brilliance looking out into the void and asking, is there anyone else out there? Maybe there are, maybe they're listening too. Or maybe we're the first to look up. Either way, SETI's listening. And I for one hope they find something. I think it would be genuinely terrifying if we're the only consciousness in the universe. Like, how many times did we nearly not make it, even just in the last hundred years? What about the next hundred or thousand? I think it's healthy to ponder these sorts of questions to stay aware of the big picture. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Well, if you got one, share your best alien story. Probably just no butt probe stuff, please. If you liked or found this video interesting, go ahead and click on one of my other videos that should be popping up on the screen. And if you like those and want to see more, go ahead and hit that sub button. I'm trying to get these videos out every two weeks. I'm doing my best, I promise. As you can hopefully see from some of the upgrades I've made around here recently, I have some big plans and some awesome content in the works, which you don't want to miss out on. But it also means that you get to be part of something new. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome week and I'll see you next time.